Hello, my name is Grant Logston, Machine Tool Technology at Elizabethtown Community and Technical College. Uh, in this lab practice, we're going to be looking at the dial indicator. And if you read through the instructions, they're very clear, but I want to give a demonstration here how that works. So we have our granite plate, we have our dial indicator, and we want to make sure the tip is tight. Always make sure the tip is tight. And the way the instructions say, you take your part, you measure your part with a steel rule, and say if my part is a little over one inch, it's about an inch and uh, uh, three thirty seconds, something like that. I'm going to use a one inch gauge block. So I'm going to use a one inch gauge block, slide it under my indicator, zero it out. So my indicator is at zero right now. I can turn the dial. I can set it at zero, and I hope you can see this okay. And then I'm going to pull it off. So right there, when the indicator is on zero, it's one inch. So what I'm going to do is find the difference between one inch and my part, okay? So I'm going to raise this up, drop it down on my part, and it looks like 73 thousandths. So as I drop it off, okay, we're 73 thousandths difference between this and the one inch gauge block. So my answer for part number six, you can see it has part number six, I would write height in inches, it's going to be 1.073 inches, and then it asks me to convert it to metric. Okay, so that's how this works when we do our dial indicator testing. You find the gauge block that's slightly under the size of your part. One inch gauge block, set it on zero, pull it out, put your part on there and the difference between the one inch gauge block and your part is going to be your size. So we have 73 thousandths. So this part is one inch and 73 thousandths. Okay, so now what I want to do is show you a little bit about the test indicator. And we're in the process of making some new test indicator holders back here, but this one will do fine for what we're doing. Usually you want your indicator, you want your tip about 20 degrees down, and uh, so what we're going to do now, we're going to test a part, and we're going to test part number nine. So what I want to do is measure part number nine, and let's look at the instructions. Uh, example, the part measures one and seven eighths with a steel rule. Uh, you will use a one and 55 64 or 1.859 gauge block stack. So I find a gauge block stack that is just a little bit over or a little bit under, uh, just make sure you know which way you're going, uh, the size of the, the, the sample workpiece. So I'm looking at about one and a half. That's just about one and a half on this part. Okay, so we're going to use a test indicator. So I'm going to use 1.4 uh, and then 131, which is going to make our total. See if we can ring these together. Probably not going to be able to do it with a cheap set of gauge blocks, plus in a little bit of a hurry. That doesn't work well. So what we'll do, we shall lock our clamp down and we'll raise this up. Looks like it's already all the way up. And maybe we'll let it down now until we come down to the 1 and 531. 1.531 is our gauge block stack. And I'm going to set the indicator on zero if possible. It's a little loose. It's not the best it's not the best equipment around, so but it does the job. It gets the point across. When you have to buy 10 or 20 of these things, uh, it, it's a little difficult. See if I can get it back up where I want it. There we go. Okay, right there, let me zero out the indicator. And I've got Roger Mary in the process of making several of these brackets, which are very good. They're going to stick out just a little further. So we're, we're zero is, let's see, let me write this down. I always write it down. Zero equals 
1.531. And I'm going to pull that gauge block stack out. And I uh, see that we only went up about 15 thousandths. We don't have a lot of travel on the test indicator. So now I'm going to put my part in and I'm going to drag it over. Whoa. So we went right here. You can see there was zero. We went 15. 30, 35, about 36 thousandths up past the gauge block stack. So I can add 0 0.036 to my measurement and it looks like my part is going to be 1.567. So that's what I would write on this. Okay, all I'm doing is telling the difference between the gauge block stack and the actual part gauge block stack and the actual part. So let me look at part number nine. There it is there. And I will just write my answer. 1.567. 1.567. Okay, so that's how we, we do the dial and test indicator lab practice. And if you have questions, you can hunt me down and I'll do my best to answer those. But the key is to remember that uh, a dial and a test indicator, they don't give you a measurement. What they do, they tell the difference between a standard, uh, a constant, and your practice, uh, practice part. Here is my gauge block, one inch. My part is up here, it's 73 thousandths bigger. So my part is one, thousand, one inch and 73 thousandths. Over here, we have our gauge block stack at 1.531 and we've got the indicator set it was set at zero let's move it around may have not had everything locked down properly it's set at zero okay we'll move it back now we want to see how high we're going to go going a little bit higher now we may have bottomed out a while ago you don't get a lot of rotation on that so let's do that again Okay, so let's actually just move the needle just a bit. Okay, so what we want to do is drop that indicator down like that. There we go. So our answer was actually wrong on this one a while ago because the indicator bottomed out. Be careful of that. I actually did that to test you, so everybody did well. Okay. So it looks like we need to adjust this. Okay, so we're right at 1.531. Now we put our part under it, and we're going 30. We are going 30, 40, 8 thousandths over. So we were quite off while ago. 48 thousand. So we're going to go 1.531. We're going to add 48,000.048. Oh, 048. Add it together and we get 1.579. So it is quite a bit of difference than what I have. So I'll scratch that out and put 1.579. So make sure your indicator doesn't bottom out. These indicators don't have a lot of travel, maybe two rounds, and that's it. So be very, very, very careful. And they do read in half thousands. Okay, so what we're doing, we're taking a standard, comparing it to a workpiece, finding the difference, and adding that difference or subtracting that difference to our gauge blocks. So I, I hope you'll enjoy this. It's good practice. It's very good practice on how to use your indicators. Uh, and again, like I say, if you have questions, just let me know and we'll take care of it. Good luck on your lab.